Good afternoon and welcome to today's webinar on the Lilly release. Uh, today we're going to be focusing on our new and improved financial reporter and we'll go over some other smaller features too and then tell you about what's coming up next. So today's agenda, uh, we're going to do a walkthrough of the financial reporter overview. Then we're going to talk about rollout, readiness and resources. And then finally, we're going to talk about Magnolia and a new rollout strategy going forward. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to our esteemed uh, product owner, Aparna, to walk you through the financial reporter. Thanks, John. And uh, thanks to everyone for attending this. Um, in the Lily release, as uh, John just mentioned, we've, this, is, this has been our big focus. Uh, the financial reporter was one of the first features that we uh, that we had, and we had done incremental changes to it and enhancements, but uh, this was a huge overhaul, uh, not just on the front end, but uh, there was some refactoring to the back end as well. We have, um, so we've implemented it using Lightning Web Components, and uh, we now have the ability, one of the enhancements is that we have the ability to add a logo and a company name to our standard financial reports. We've added rounding um, and we've also made some improvements to the ledger inquiry tool. Um, we, we can now export it to Excel. Uh, and all these reports are now, uh, can now be run programmatically. So let's take a look at a quick demo. So my navigation is still going to be from uh, the financial reports uh, from Accounting Home. And uh, you will notice immediately that uh, it's a lightning friendly, very open, user friendly user interface. We have maintained uh, the same uh, fields, their business rules are still the same. The logic behind them is still the same. We've added a few, we've added these, we've organized this into three main tabs, the standard, which holds the uh, main financial statements, the PL budget report, and the ledger inquiry tool. Uh, we also have the custom reports, which is on its which continues to be on its own tab, and then we have uh, the report settings. So this is where we would make all our uh, changes. So uh, the enhancements that we just talked about. So let's just go set that up. So I have a ledger here uh, that um, that I set up for this demo, and I'm going to change the name. And then I'm going to upload the logo. And give me a preview. Uh, this toggle here uh, is essentially for multi-ledger clients who, who want to choose that same setting on different ledgers. Uh, below this is the ability to change the accounting period column header on the financial reports. So this, uh, you will be familiar with this uh, convention, uh, the year and then month. We also now have uh, the end of the month and then a month year format. So I'll choose this and I'll leave the rounding. This is the other uh, setting that we can make. Um, we have no rounding, it's the default. We also have whole amounts and round the thousands. I'll leave this here and we'll come back and look at it. So let's hit save. And let's go take a look at the profit and loss report. Um, for the, the UI changes here, uh, like I said, the rules behind these fields and what populates, uh, what defaults populate are still the same, including the uh, subtype and the suppress uh, zero amounts uh, checkboxes. The GL variable fields still uh, still respect the translation workbench, so uh, you will see that the name has changed here. The two new fields that we've added are the subtitle, which you can, which you can enter at runtime. And uh, this is the rounding field, which would default to whatever value you had set on the report settings page. So, um, oh, and this is also familiar. It's the same uh, report results uh, that we had earlier. Uh, the one change that we've made is uh, to model this after the Salesforce list view. 
So I'd be able to you know, select multiple. I can, uh, there are 25 on a page and I can select multiple and delete them. For now, it's just the delete action, but we are hoping that we um, have more uh, actions in the future. So let's run a report. I'm just going to choose these dates because I have data set up for those dates. So I get a toast that it's in progress. Uh, my status here is running and then a toast when it's complete. So when I can click into it. You'll see immediately that the logo is uh, what I chose earlier and my uh, company name is also shown here. The, uh, in the earlier financial reports, we had uh, some information in the footer of the report. Um, we've moved this to a drop list at the top here, which uh, gives us all of that information and can be closed. Uh, I, the report generates by default uh, with these main subtotals and the main uh, total uh, information in this collapsed format, and I can click on expand all to look at the details uh, and collapse all as well works in the reverse. Uh, the export um, ability is still the same. Uh, Excel, we've made, not made any changes in this release to the Excel uh, export. The PDF uh, st uh, also supports the logo and um, company name. So let's just do that. Take a look at the PDF. So there's my logo, the report. Uh, the report is largely the same. And if I had added a subtitle, it would have shown on the uh, PDF as well. Um, as for the body of the report, the left pane where the subtypes and the GL accounts are listed uh, is this fixed pane. Uh, we have this more open feel, so uh, we've ha we have this horizontal scroll bar, so you can look at uh, data that's, uh, if, you, if you're running uh, for multiple periods, you can scroll to take a look at uh, data a little bit easier. These were the main changes, and now I'll talk about the other change that we made with the drill down. So all of our reports, except the cash flow report, uh, now drill down to the directly into the ledger inquiry tool. So let me click into this. And I'll scroll down to look at all my transactions. So um, this, we added this because we felt that people uh, would be able to you know, directly find uh, any information they were looking for from these results. Um, the ledger inquiry uh, is also, we've maintained the same uh, working. We've added some enhancements, like I said. Uh, all these fields um, work the same way as before. We've added a source field, which basically shows you all the different kinds of source documents that uh, create transactions. And we also have an aggregate by, I'll show you how these work. So, um, I have these billings, uh, these various transactions that are posted to billing lines in this case and a journal entry. And if I wanted to just see, for instance, just billing lines, I could choose uh, billing lines and run. And it would just uh, show me those. I could choose multiple of them by holding the shift key down. And this would show me all my results. We clear this. Let me show you the aggregate. So the aggregate by is of it just collapses all the information, sums all the information, and uh, into whatever uh, dimension uh, I choose from here. So for this purpose, I'll just choose account because that's the way I set it up here. Choose it. Run, and you'll see that all my transactions are now. Um, summed by uh, the different accounts that I had listed here. The, uh, remove this and then show you the Excel export. This is the big enhancement to the ledger inquiry. 
So let's export this. Take a look. So all my results are shown here at the top. And uh, we also added the report statistics, uh, the, which is in the middle. And we added the all the criteria that was used to run that, uh, that particular set of results. So this is the ledger inquiry. Right. And um, let's go back to the uh, main reports tab and look at the other. Let's look at the PNL budget report. Actually, no, I forgot to show you about the rounding. Um, so I can run my report with uh, rounding. Enter the same dates again. Let's choose whole amounts and run this. And now you'll see that the uh, data is shown and shown without the decimal places. Uh, we added this to notate that the you know the rounding has been changed. So this shows up on the PDF as well as on the Excel uh, exports. So this is the rounding. Um, let's go back and look at the other reports really quick. So PNL budget report. Waiting for it to complete. There it is. And here's my uh, report with uh, data. So the, the way the data is presented is still the same. I can just collapse and expand all these individual rows. Right. And let's take a look at the balance sheet. I'll just click in the one that I just generated. And here's that data, and I can collapse it. Expand and all the same functionality as before. Try balance. <clears throat> Same format. And then the cash flow statement. So uh, if you remember, I said that the cash flow statement will continue to have um, the drill down into the old financial report transactions page. So that should still work. This page. And that's because we currently don't support uh, cash flow categories on the ledger inquiry report. Um, here we are. And now let's take a look at the custom reports. So we've made some changes here. We've uh, made it easy for you to navigate to the financial statement definitions list view. There's a couple of ways. This will take you straight to the list view. Um, as well as the report name will take you directly into that uh, report's definition. So I'll just click into that and show you. And then I can make any any uh, modifications I need to make. Um, similarly, this button here. Um, and let's run one report.
Right. And the way this report is set up, it's, it has uh, the subtypes, so they can all be collapsed and expanded. Uh, we have a KB article uh, for current users who already have reports set up, custom set up to guide you about the indents and how uh, to look at your custom reports, run them in the sandbox and make any indent tweaks so that the uh, rows collapse like, uh, like our new UI now provides. Um, what else? Um, I think with that, I'm at the end of my demo. Back to you, John. Thank you. Um, there are some smaller items that are in the Lily release, um, some of which are clone as credit memo option on the billing payables clone with lines. In BDC, we have import for non-ledger currency bank transactions via Yodli. And the last thing we want to talk about is there will be limits for creating additional general ledger accounts beyond 300 and general ledger account variables beyond 400. For each org. Um, this will be $250 a month for each additional three for each additional package of that. Um, if this applies to you, um, what we do is encourage you to submit a case to our support team for a chart of accounts consultation call to review your business case and uh, try to find the optimum solution for you. Lily timing. Um, we pushed to uh, sandboxes uh, last week, two weeks ago, sorry. And yep. the, pro the production pull, as opposed to a push, we'll, we will release that on the 22nd of August um, for people to upgrade to Lily. And what's coming next? The next release is Magnolia. Um, it's coming this fall. Um, and actually what we're going to do is something different. We're actually going to even smaller deliverables. In this case, the first one that will uh, be released is Magnolia Ledger Hierarchy, um, which is coming in November. And then there's a second Magnolia release called Magnolia Home, which is a completely redesigned accounting home screen. Um, for those of you who've seen Bank Rec or Bank uh, Direct Connect, uh, they're in the same vein. It's a whole new interface uh, design. We're pretty excited about it. And the last one is uh, Magnolia Settings, which is uh, to do the same thing to accounting settings and bring it up to speed, you know, uh, current design patterns. And that'll be coming in January of next year. Questions? I see one question about uh, is the new limits per ledger. Uh, this is per org. These limits are per org. There's also a question of whether this uh, applies to everyone. And the answer is yes on the limit. One of the other questions I had was when is this going to be rolled out to all customers? Lily is going to be a pull only. If yeah. Um, when you are ready to install Lily, then you can put in a case, request the links, and we will provide those to you. And then at that point, you can install it. Um, install it if you do need help. You can let us know. But it is strictly pull. Um, Magnolia. We will return back to the pushing out to users. I see one question about the does the GL account limit include Cash flow categories, it does not include that. Our partner, did you show them a um, example of the Excel export? The I think they were asking specifically for the profit and loss. Oh, yeah, I can show that. It, I think I just said that there weren't any changes to it, but I can demo that.
So we haven't made a uh, change on, other than adding this one rounding information here to the Excel. There's a question here on the limits in Lily. What happens if we currently have more than 400 GLAVs? Um, it'll work just as it does now uh, until you try to create another one. And then it'll prompt you to contact us to have a further discussion via case. John, James, did we talk about what happens if we currently have more than a certain number of GLAVs? As John just said, when there is the when you need to add a new GLAV, you will get a message to please contact the support team, at which time we'll set up a call so that we can look at and discuss what's happening within the org. And from there, we will typically um, refer you to our account managers to work through what exactly needs to be done for your org in order to enable you to add more. There's a question, is the upgrade optional? As James said earlier, this is going to be a pull. So the answer is yes. Um, however, once Magnolia gets released, that will be a push, which will not be optional. I think, Aparna, you did answer that the GL account limits do mm -hmm. not include the cash flows. Yes. Just to reemphasize that. Mm -hmm. um, how does the pull work? You send me but in a case that I would like to receive the Lily upgrade and we will send you the links and you can unload it um, and instructions on how to install that. Um, if there are any issues or questions, you can certainly can also ask the support staff for their help. There's a question about what the fee is per month. So that is uh, 250 a month for this additional set of 300. GL accounts and 400 clubs. The limits include any and all accounts. It's um, whether GL accounts or GLAVs, if, even if they're non-active, um, it's all are included. There's a question here. Will you have to have Lily in order to get Magnolia? And the answer to that is no. Lily will be included in Magnolia. Magnolia. There's a question about, can we add more than one GL account in the ledger inquiry? Uh, at the moment, the way we have it is you run one, run one GL account, uh, or you can specify none. So, so there is not an option to be able to select more than one. And of course, none will show everything. Oh, here's a question about if you collapse the items on the report views, are those shown as collapsed um, when you run the PDF export? Uh, the PDF export is the same. It won't show them as collapsed. If I That is just a viewing tool. Uh, the PDF will still show uh, all of the GL accounts and subtype rows and totals. When the files are exported to Excel, correct me if I'm wrong, Aparna, but the formulas are not exported, correct? Not yet, not yet. Um, we have, we have only have one sum. I think we have a sum on the Excel. Inquiry again. We are trying to do this in a phased approach for the other reports. We've, we have one sum on the Ledger inquiry. Let me just go there. Oh, is that some review? No, I'm mistaken. I think we were in discussions about adding this for the other reports, but we haven't yet. I don't see uh, some here. 
There's a question here about a pack patch for bank rec in Kuali and whether that rolls up in Lily and the answer is yes. All former patches get rolled into the most current release. Uh, what's another question about cash flows? In order to run a cash flow report, you must have cash flow activated in your org. Um, though I will recommend that if you do want, do not have cash flow and you would like to have it implemented, to put in a case so that you can discuss implementing that with one of our product consultants, as there are limitations on uh, the methodology for implementing cash flow. Again, uh, lots of questions about the limits. If um, there are concerns about the limits, if you're over existing already ex over on your limits, I would recommend that you submit a case so that you can have a discussion with our product consulting team and looking at the number that you have and the structures that you have. And then afterwards, um, <coughs> based on the outcome of that, um, we can then have you talk to our account managers on enabling the next level. I'm sorry, I think we we do fall into this um, issue. Oftentimes we'll use our own abbreviations that we're used to using without seeing the full line. Um, somebody was asking, what is a GLAF? A GL, it's simply our way of abbreviating a GL account variable. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of say, so GLAF's a lot easier for us. There's a question about, is that the cumulative number of GLAVs for one variable, or is it for all four? Uh, it is for all four. Bernardino, the answer to their questions about um, supporting Salesforce console. We did some testing on that, James, yes. But you know what? I can confirm because we... Might have been with something else. Do we need to do manual configurations when pulled? Um, no, uh, for the financial reporter, uh, there are no any. There are no configurations that need to be done. Uh, and if there are uh, permission sets and so on, I think those are uh, outlined in detail in the knowledge base article, right, James? Yeah. So I was Can actually going to say. Settings? Um, a number of different questions are that I've been going through here are answered and shown in our knowledge base articles. We have tried to be very comprehensive in our knowledge base for the new reporting, financial reporting, with a combination of both um, instructions and um, green prints to help you understand and how to implement them. GL accounts will apply to Magnolia. Um, so when that's pushed, these limits will apply to everyone. Is there an additional cost for each ledger? Uh, there is a cost for the for additional transaction ledgers. Uh, budget ledgers are, uh, there is uh, no cost for the budget ledgers. There was a question about the credit memo cloning and the billings and payables. That's part of Lily. Um, so if you implement Lily, those those are available to you. Um, any additional fees or things such as that, those are associated strictly with the general ledger account and the GLAV limits. Um, there's a question about, can we customize uh, what columns appear on the ledger inquiry report? Uh, the, at the moment, the answer is no. And I, I believe we answered this once, but I've seen it a couple of times. Um, for the GLAVs, it's the total number of GLAVs, period. Where it's one, two, three, and four. Add them all together, and that's the total available that you have, and that needs to fit within the limit. I see that someone is receiving an error on the ledger inquiry report. Uh, is the correct way to, buy, to submit a case, James? Yes, if you were, are definitely if in your sandbox and you're doing some testing and you come across something that is giving you an error message or does not appear to be working correctly, please submit a case to us and that way one of the product consultants can help you with that. 
Uh, we have a product suggestion for adding formulas. Uh, we've definitely made a note of this. The right now, the P and L is uh, you can only enter one clav at a time, correct? You the cannot put in for oh, if you, you can, can only. Enter multiple. Oh, oh, yes, yes, of each of one type, yes. Right, you can only select one at a time. You cannot have a clav. You can't pick three out of five clavs ones. Not at the moment, no. There was a question about can we add additional fields to the budget inquiry reports? Um, not at this time. What I would recommend is that if you do have a product enhancement that you are looking for is again, submit a case, put that in there, and then we can pass that on to our product development team for consideration. Okay. Wanted to point out there, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Now, there was right. a question about were there any improvements to the creation of the custom report writer? Uh, the way we set up the reports is still the same, but because we changed uh, some of the definitions of, uh, you know, how these uh, how these rows show with bolded, uh, you know, bolded font and larger size and so on, um, I would encourage you to look at the uh, KB article, which outlines exactly how. Uh, you may not need to tweak your custom reports, but if there's anything, then you can test it in the sandbox. Um, one, there's been a number of questions about the clone with lines and um, whether or not they can be updated. The clone with lines is basically a option that you may choose. You can always do what we've done before, which is to clone the billing, for example, and then go in and use the mass ed edit found to make what it, what you need to be minus our credit. So you can you can always use it the old way. Um, the credit with credit to the clone to a credit memo was simply a way that we would automate part of that function for you. And even after you've done that, you can still edit the values to adjust them to what you need. So the clone with lines, the, the clone with credit memo is not doesn't lock the credit memo. You can still edit and change it to whatever you need it to be. So sure, another re related question: uh, Is it only available? Is the credit memo cloning to billings and payables only available with an additional fee? And there is no additional fee for that. It's part of the financial suite package. We're coming up on two forty-five. We probably have time for one more question. And I believe one of those was, is there a way to make the standard financial reports aggregate to a custom object? And that is not part of our current reporting functions at this time. There's another product suggestion about um, the ability to configure the columns on the ledger inquiry report. So if they don't use GLABS, for instance, they use description or comment. We yeah. take the suggestion and definitely consider it. Exactly. And time cards and re expense reports, we made no UI changes to those, did we? No, not recently. No. no. Um, it was simply a matter of the, the export to Excel right now, there is no formatting included in that. Um, if you need, if you would like certain fields to be bolded or not, that you would have to do that in Excel yourself. I would like to thank everyone for coming out to our webinar this afternoon. Um, we'll be following up with communications about the release of Lily and uh, more with Magnolia as time goes by in the fall. Thank you again. And Thanks. have a good day. Uh, rest of your day. Mm -hmm.